you know, we've been talking about this digital health passport. How will it work, given that the uh, rate of vaccination across the world is uh, it's pretty uneven? Sure, Graham. great to be back on Bloomberg here uh, this morning, Wise. In terms of digital health passports, right, we actually have been utilizing digital health passports across English primarily uh, for the stadium, for all the players, media, and coaches as a safe way to get back into the stadiums. Right? Uh, in terms of travel-wise, we certainly have been piloting this uh, with Cathay Pacific, uh, certainly IATA Common Pass as well. And then, so when we think about the future of digital health passports, we feel that it will certainly be necessary uh, to include vaccinations and testing as a requirement for future of travel. What's the timeline for these passports, Danny? Uh, so the passports, for, you know, for in the English primarily, is so it's already operational uh, currently. Uh, in terms of you know, the health passports for travel-wise, uh, certainly we're still in piloting stages with various airlines as well as various providers uh, yeah, globally. Tell me something here, Danny. You know, the thing is, you're helping various entities to create a travel bubble. How would it actually work? How would you monitor it? And, uh, of course, this is going to be key to reviving international travel. I mean, so certainly there's two parts to it, right? The first part is going to be vaccinations. Um, so certainly we're not involved in that part. The second part of this will actually be testing. And then so once individuals actually receive their negative COVID-19 test results, it automatically gets into the passport. Individuals will then show up to the airport and being able to show this to the you know, airlines, uh, authorities to prove that they are indeed negative for COVID-19. Uh, but, Danny, I mean, you talk to various uh, airlines and aviation bodies as well. Are you getting a sense of when things will really start to open up in a big way? What are, what are they saying? Without naming names, what's the sort of sense you're getting? Certainly, there's a lot of hope in aviation you know, from the various partners that we are speaking to. Uh, the hope has increased significantly over the last four to six weeks. So we are forecasting that basically the second half of 2021, a lot of travel will be revived. Well, absolutely. And so, you know, give us a sense of how then you grow the company. I mean, this is the, the growth uh, uh, potential that you must have, must be at its uh, zenith right now. Yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, certainly we've been able to grow quite fast within the last you know, 12, 14 months. Uh, company size right now, we're up to over 400 employees globally uh, in the UK here, and here in Hong Kong, looking to expand uh, further throughout into the US as well as into Southeast Asia. OK, I mean, all this may, you know, the, the, the making of these passports, etc., creates all sort of, uh, uh, throws up a whole load of other things, doesn't it? Like uh, privacy concerns. How do you address those? Yeah, so in terms of privacy concerns wise, right, we only share the information with whoever you specify us to share it with. Uh, we don't share it with any other third parties uh, in terms of any of the information that we get in terms of positive results or negative results. Uh, certainly for authorities wise here in Hong Kong wise, we also have to share positive results, uh, but certainly that's a, a much needed uh, aspect. Uh, Danny, earlier we talked about your collaboration with uh, Oxford University. Take us through what you hope will be gained from this. Certainly. So last year we started a collaboration with Oxford University uh, as we acquired an you know, Oxford University spin-out company called Oxid, which actually had developed um, a specific assay for rapid COVID-19 results that you can get uh, in roughly 30 minutes. Uh, so upon that collaboration, we, you know, we, we discussed significantly much more in the last six months how we can deepen that relationship. And so certainly we're announcing today the establishment of a Prenetics Innovation Center at the University of Oxford in both Oxford, uh, England, and as well as Oxford Suzhou, which is the first overseas research center uh, of Oxford. So the collaboration will mean that we're yeah, going to be spending it. much more resources and funding in terms of COVID-19 as well as infectious disease development. Well, tell me about this rapid molecular diagnostic uh, testing kit that you're going to be coming out with. Uh, I, I know you can't really talk about it that much because the announcement's uh -huh. coming early next month. Uh, so give us a sense of, of what it, how it changes the game, though. Yeah, so we believe it's going to be a game changer, right? So certainly we're working very closely with the you know, University of Oxford on this development, uh, taking what we've already learned uh, in terms of the technology piece 
And what we enable to develop and certainly you know, bring out to market is a rapid molecular test, which will be able to get results in 20 minutes, digital health, digital ready, uh, passport wise. Uh, individuals can do this from point of care setting as well as in an at home setting. Uh, so certainly it's going to be a breakthrough in terms of accuracy, portability, uh, and certainly we want to make it affordable to the mass market as well. And Danny, we can't let you go without asking about your funding plans, your IPO plans. Um, so certainly right now we're fully focused on the business aspects of things. Uh, so certainly I think for the future fundraising and, and other plans, we'll let the business take, the, take its own course.